Hello and welcome to the Double T Insider. I'm Caitlin Kravick alongside Brett Brown bringing you the inside access into Texas Tech Athletics. In this week's episode, we sit down with a sophomore forward on the rise, Red Raider basketball's Alex Foster. They keep the Raider power chance alive at each game. This week we feature the Texas Tech cheer squad. We also sit down with former Texas Tech wide receiver and current safety coach, Trey Haverty. In this week's On the Clock segment, we feature Red Raider Volleyball's head coach, Don Flora. This past weekend, Red Raider football took on the University of Texas here inside Jones AT&T Stadium. UT was the first team to put points on the board with a 46-yard field goal completed by junior kicker Nick Rose, making the score 3-0. But before the first quarter finished out, defensive lineman Jackson Richardson sacked Tyrone Swoops, with Brandon Jackson coming in for a fumble recovery, scoring a Red Raider touchdown. Tech headed into the second quarter with a lead of 6-3 over UT, but early on, freshman quarterback Patrick Mahomes left the game due to a head-related injury, subbing in freshman walk-on Vincent Testaverde Jr. to finish the game. Testaverde was able to hand the ball off to senior running back Kenny Williams for a six-yard rush and Red Raider touchdown. However, UT was able to put two touchdowns on the board before heading into the second half, going into halftime with a lead of 17-13 over Texas Tech. The only points that would be scored for the rest of the game would be by the Longhorns. UT was able to close out the game with a victory of 34-13 over Tech. A standout performance came from junior running back DeAndre Washington who led the rushing yards for the Red Raiders. Coming up after the break, we speak with junior offensive lineman, Jared Kasser. Double T Insider is brought to you in part by Plains Capital Bank, a proud supporter of Texas Tech football. Ride with the good guys at Plains Capital Bank, Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. Visit redraiderscontest.game to register to win cool fan experiences. And by Texas Ford Dealers, Visit your Texas Ford dealer today. Ford is the best in Texas. Welcome back to the Double T Insider. I'm Alexandra Haley. This week we visit with junior offensive lineman Jared Castor. Jared Castor, center, Eagle Lake, Texas, junior. Oh, well, you know, we're pretty unique. I think every offensive line in the country, you know, has their little click that we all stick together. But just, just being, you know, kind of dirty about, you know, the way that we play and just being mean and physical up front. We're all special, I guess you could say, and you know, we're all individuals and unique. You know, we all come together as one. You know, that's what you have to be as an offensive lineman. Chemistry is, is always there because we all play for each other. You know, being a center, you, you're, you're kind of the quarterback as an offensive line. I get things going, you know, with, with, with the play. And if, you know, we have a bad play and we come off, you know, guys look up to older, the vets, you know, and, you know, I think that's, Something that I've kind of wanted to take and roll was, you know, being that guy, that, that vocal guy on the sidelines, because the sidelines can't be dead. You have to have somebody talking. If you, you know, somebody needs that person, say, hey, look, you know, it's all right. We're going to go out there. We're, we're going to get this going. We're going to go score a touchdown. Yeah, that's something I kind of took in, you know, personally about, you know, this season was, you know, being that guy that somebody can look up to, you know, being that, that vocal leader. It's an atmosphere that, that, you know, the coaches here that they've all played, you know, half of them have played for this university and they, they love the school, you know, they'll do anything for this university and, you know, they're young and energetic and they kind of, you know, they come from our aspect and they see things in our eyes that older coaches may not see and uh, being able to, you know, just go to practice and have fun, you know, coaches being in drills, you know, out there, you know, laughing up with us, but just having that young, energetic, you know, atmosphere and environment around the facility you know it, it, it's pretty fun you know I'm not I'm not the type of guy to to yell all the time you know I, I uh, you know if it needs to be I, I can do that but I, I'm more of a personal you know just a day-to-day -day talk to you you know see how the, the, the your day's going just trying to get you you know on the same page and but as a offensive line standpoint you know, I just try to get the guys around me the, the guys to my right and to my left we all try to be on the same page you know if we all go out to eat we all spend time together whatever it takes for me being a leader I just you know I just want all of us to, to see the same goal in everybody's mind just to look at life as a whole and not not take uh, day for day granted sticking together as 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 a football team you know it's when teams get through adversity like we're going through right now you know not having a great record teams you know, tend to fall off, guys start pointing fingers. But I don't think, you know, with the locker room is like it is now, guys aren't like that. I think we're all sticking together. 
because we know we see the bigger picture later down the road. You know, we see we could we still have a chance. The season's not over, and I think that that has been really good. It's been on a positive note that we're not we're not letting letting go. And we're all just sticking together and coming closer. You think about it every day when you wake up. You know how how you're going to put yourself and your brand, and you know how you're going to go about your day. And I think you know I, I enjoy it. I love it every day, knowing that I'm representing this great university. And you know you take that take that to the heart. And uh, this is a great university, great football, great you know staff that's here on this campus. And you know you don't want to let those people down because we do have you know an image that we perceive ourselves as a football team. Everybody sees us on TV. And, uh, you want this university to look good, so you know, I take that personally. Coming up next, we spotlight Red Raider basketball sophomore forward Alex Foster. Alex Foster, power forward, Julia, Illinois. So can you talk about um, your childhood a little bit and how you got into playing basketball? Um, I got into playing basketball because that's all I've been around since I was like three. My brother played, my sister played, my dad played. They didn't play like in college like me. I'm, I'm the only one who actually played in college, but my brother played in high school, my sister played in high school, and my dad played in high school. And they just pretty much instilled that in me until I was like from three. Like, I used to watch my brother play all the time, so. And I would go out there and shoot on the court while he was playing at halftime. So I just, I just fell in love with it from then. Can you talk about the transition from high school to playing at a collegiate level? Um, the difference between playing in high school and the collegiate level, the game is much faster and everybody's much stronger. And you have to go out there and know your role and you have to go out there and execute everything. So what are some of the things that you personally worked on during the off season? Um, I worked on my shooting and I worked on my conditioning. And also, you know, we had to learn the plays too. That was what I struggled on last year, learning the plays because I was a freshman and I really was new to everything. So that, that was one of the big major adjustments to me. So there have been a lot of newcomers on the team this year. Um, can you talk about kind of any words of advice you've given to the uh, new freshmen this year? Um, always play hard. Definitely always play hard because if you don't, it shows, especially on film. Always play hard, no matter what. And how would you describe your playing style and your mentality? Um, I'm a, an athletic forward. I'm an athletic big. I, I, would, um, I would say that I'm more agile than most fours and five men because most are more slower than, than other people. Um, I use that to my advantage because since I'm more quicker than most big people, I can go around them and when I go around them, I can bring in defenders and also kick the ball out. Passing as well, I'm pretty good at doing that too. How has Coach Smith influenced your playing style? Um, he encourages me you know, to pass the ball, go aggressive. Even, even you know, Coach Tubby and Coach um, Taylor, he, they both, you know, he, he, Coach Taylor actually works with me a lot, you know, after practice, before practice on my shooting. He lets me know that, you know, I need to be more aggressive in the, in the post and he lets me know what I need to do and what I don't, what I need to fix. And it, it helps me every day in practice. In the Big 12, uh, basketball is so, you know, just dominates mm -hmm. it. Can you talk about um, the, the importance of having a strong fan base, a rowdy, loud fan base? Um, in those big conference games. The okay, the 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 thing about last year, when we sold out those crowds, you felt it. As soon as you walked out there, you felt the energy of the crowd. It was just it just pumps you up. And and that you know, another team coming into a crowd like that, it's so you know demoralizing. It just you know you don't you kind of get timid. With us, you come into your home crowd and then they're they're cheering for you. As soon as you score a bucket, you feel that electricity go through your body. It's just it's amazing. Coming up next on Double T Insider. My relationship with my teammates, honestly, the easiest way to describe it is we're a family. Welcome back to the show. This week we sat down with members of the Texas Tech cheer team. Check it out. My name is Bridget Van Weasel and I'm a senior here at Texas Tech. Some of my favorite traditions about Texas Tech is definitely the whole game day aspect. Um, Pre-game is just amazing. You're on the field. It's I can't even describe the feeling. The fans are screaming. You've got the horse who's going to run. Your masked rider. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, everything. Everything about game day I'm going to miss for sure. And usually, to get the crowd pumped up, we'll kind of wait for like a big play to happen. And uh, we jump up and down, you know, shake your palms. We have signs that say noise, which is kind of like an indicator. Hey, crowd, let's make some noise. So that helps. Uh, my favorite tradition here at Tech is definitely when uh, we do the fanfare where everybody hits their legs, go, fight, win, and then uh, Fearless Champion runs out. 
it's definitely the coolest one. Being in an organization like uh, cheerleading, you instantly have a whole lot of friends, um, obviously the people that are on the team with you. Um, so you automatically have some camaraderie with people that are uh, at the school. Um, so it's not too hard making, making friends right off the bat. I am from New Hampshire, so I wasn't going to know anyone at all when I came here. So when I made the team, I was really happy because I knew automatically I had some kind of connection down here. And these people are, some of these people who I've made friends with will become my friends for my entire life already. And I already know that. And I'm glad that I still have a couple more years to make even more friends because I made more connections throughout my entire life. I came to see the cheerleading. I did really fall in love with the school. It is a great school and cheerleading just on top of that added to it. The scholarships they give and the benefits that we receive are really, really nice and they outweigh anyone else in the country. Definitely, I just fell in love with the school. I was just searching on Google and it came up and I found out that they have an all-girl team and they offer a really good scholarship. So it's one of the very, very few schools in the nation that offers a scholarship. So it pretty much solidified my decision to come here. Sometimes it does get difficult, especially if you take more than like 12 hours at a time. Um, my fall season's really, 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 really busy because we have basketball, soccer, football especially, we have appearances, and then on top of that you have your schoolwork. But um, it's really helpful because we have um, study hall, and that helps us stay on track and keep time management going. My relationship with my teammates, honestly, the easiest way to describe it is we're a family. Um, we spend more time together than we do with our actual family, so we're all extremely close. Um, brother, sister, bond, there's a lot of love within our cheer program, and so it's really nice to have that in their support throughout the year, because school gets tough, you have cheer, and it's, it's good to have them, a nice solid backbone for sure. They really just want us to be, as people have talked about before, as like a family type situation where you can lean on your teammates. So they really stress that a lot where you have these 36, 40 other members of the team that you can go to and say, I need help here, or can we talk, or I just need someone to be with right now just because I'm hurting or I'm, I have something wrong in my life. They really stress that we have so many people that you're never alone, ever. Not here. After the break, we sit down with Red Raider football safeties coach Trey Haverty. This week, we visit with former Texas Tech football player and current safeties coach Trey Haverty. I started playing football when I was little. It was basically, I was an only child, so it was the only thing to do is to entertain myself and just fell in love with sports, played them all till high school, and then concentrated on football from there on. I graduated with a business degree here, thought I'd play. When I got done playing, you know, the next phase of life, I had to decide what I wanted to do, and uh, decided that football, I wanted to stay in football, and coaching was the next, you know, next map into it, and got into high school, junior college, and then was a graduate assistant. I wanted to be a head coach, so I got a chance to learn when I was at, you know, at another place, TCU, and got a chance to learn defense, fell in love with defense, and just like knowing both sides of the ball, you understand it better. John Parchman was big. He used to be the head coach at Midland Lee, and then he was, I worked for him when we were at Cisco Junior College. Successful West Texas coach and kind of taught me how to do things. You know, your word means something. If you tell a high school coach you're going to do something, you better do it on time means early. But it was good for a young coach to learn from him. We try to say be the best group, next guy up. Because in this, you know, especially at the safety position, we're going through it now, you have a lot of injuries. So it can't just be one guy. But I think all of them, you know, we try to instill that in all of them. You obviously want talented guys, but then it's the other little stuff. You know, guys that, you know, of high quality or work ethics, going to class every day, doing the right thing. You know, if, if they lie to you, then you don't want a kid like that here because you're around them for four years. So just being a good moral person and then obviously talent helps on top of that. You know, they all need guidance. You know, we're kind of parents or big brothers away from home. So when they do slip a little bit, you got to stay on them. Because if you give an inch, just like anything in society, they're going to take a mile. So the minute you see them slip or they might fib a little bit here, you got to get on them and there's got to be consequences. And just like anything, kids know if they have consequences, they'll stay in the lines. Saturday, it's too late. It starts, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But if you think you're just going to show up on Saturday and get the result you want, you're fooling yourself. And it's, you know, today. And we got to have a better practice tomorrow for what we had today. And once you step on the field, if you're prepared, you're going to play fast and do your job. You know, we still have a lot of work to do. We can't be, you know, content with where we're at now or we won't get where we want to get. But just continue to get better. And you can't look at the end result. You got to look at the process. And it's day by day, play by play, rep by rep. And that's how you got to approach it. And the results will eventually come. I don't know where we can get, but if you continue to get better, we'll get there. You know, we set goals, but at the end of the day, it's got to be the process that gets you there. And, 
wherever that is. For a goal right now, let's go win every game we have left, which starts with Saturday, which starts with having a good practice tomorrow. The support they keep giving us helps us because part of our business, half of it is recruiting, getting good players here. And when recruits come to the game, they see the atmosphere from the fans. And as long as they keep supporting us, we have a chance. So just keep supporting us and you know we're, we're working as hard as we can to give them what they want. We're not satisfied, neither are they right now. Get your timer set. The Double T Insider is going on the clock with Coach Don Flora. Double T Insider here about to go on the clock with Coach Don Flora, a game where I'll give Coach 10 scenarios that he has to answer in under 60 seconds. All right, Coach, do you think you can handle this? Yeah, let's compete. Let's go. All right, 60 seconds on the clock, please. First question, if I could travel anywhere in the world, I would first travel to? Uh, I'd go to Tahiti. If I didn't coach volleyball, the next sport I would coach is? Golf or tennis. If I had any superpower, it would be to? Fly. I'd love to be Superman. <laughs> if I could have dinner with any person, living or dead, it would be? Let's go with Brother Jesus. My favorite home-cooked meal is? Ooh, uh, how about chicken and noodles? If I could see any musician live, it would be? Um, how about Michael Jackson? If oh, I he's dead. Okay. All right. <laughs> if I won the lottery, the first thing I would buy is? Uh, oh, how about a, I don't know, I'd probably give a lot of money away. My uh, player with the worst singing voice is? Ooh, I think Jen Allen might have to earn that. <laughs> My favorite TV show growing up was? Uh, let's go with uh, the Brady Bunch. And the last question, my go-to selfie pose is? Uh, with family, with a smile. All right. Oh, congratulations. You beat the clock. Hey, hey you got to beat the clock. <laughs> there you go. Guns up. For the Double T Insider, I'm Caitlin Kravick, and we just went on the clock with Coach Don Flora. I'm Luke Heath. Coming up next, we take a look at the best tweets about Texas Tech athletics. Each week for the Double T Insider, we pick the best tweets about Texas Tech athletics and air them right here on the show. And this week, we're featuring tweets about Red Raider football. Aden tweeted, anything is possible if you have persistence, a good work ethic, and the best attitude. Hashtag Reckham and hashtag Monday Motivation. Ali Speziali tweeted, reasons I love Lubbock, Texas. Hashtag Sunsets and hashtag TTU Football. Roberto tweeted at football saying, ready for the game versus Baylor. Hashtag Reckham, hashtag Guns Up, and hashtag Texas Tech. Well, that's all the tweets for this week's episode. Be sure to follow the Double T Insider on Twitter and check back next week when your tweet could just be featured on the show. Now let's take a look at Texas Tech's upcoming games. Texas Tech Volleyball will face the University of Kansas Saturday. This will be the second to last home game for the Red Raiders. First set from the United Supermarkets Arena is scheduled to begin at 3 p.m. Central. Head coach Tubby Smith and the Red Raider basketball team continue their three-game homestand Saturday as they face Texas A&M Commerce. Tip-off from Lubbock, Texas is set to begin at 7 p.m. Central. Thanksgiving weekend just got a whole lot better. Saturday, November 29th, Texas Tech will be in Arlington, Texas as they face the Baylor Bears. This series dates back to 1929 and will mark the fourth consecutive game at AT&T Stadium. Double T Insider was brought to you in part by UMC Health System. It's our hospital. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. Visit RedRaidersContest.game to register to win cool fan experiences. Red Raider Club, your support, their effort, our fearless champions. And by Texas Ford Dealers. Visit your Texas Ford dealer today. Ford is the best in Texas. Well, that's a wrap for this week's episode of the Double T Insider. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date with Texas Tech Athletics. For Caitlin Kravick, I'm Brett Brown, and until next time, guns up.